the Love Lab. Today we are cooking up thick, thick pork chops. We're gonna sear them, then we're gonna put them in the oven, and it's gonna be some serious down home good cooking. This is like grandma cooking. All right, guys, let's jump right in. Here we've got beautiful pork chops, TLC. Ain't they pretty? No, 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 no. This needs to be a boy group. Cause these is manly pork chops. You know what I'm saying? These ain't no little girls. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm gonna think of a name before we're done. We're gonna season these real basic, okay? We're gonna start with generously salting them. Don't be afraid to salt the food, y'all. Okay? And you know why I say that? Cause for one thing, that's why some of y'all food don't have no flavor. Okay? I'm just telling you. Nobody else is gonna tell you. They're talking about you, but they're not telling you. You don't put no salt on your food. And number two, this is a thick old pork chop. It can handle it, okay? This pork chop can handle this salt. All right, I'm getting my skillet is going. I got a little bit of olive oil in there. Got the salt, I'm gonna add to that some seasoned pepper. I love this stuff, this is old school seasoning. You know, the, I mean the stuff that mama used to use. You know, mama had some Lowry's in there and some seasoned oil and some seasoned pepper. And she kept it moving, all right? We'll just get a little hot. Let me move this off for a second. And here's some garlic powder. Because garlic powder is our friend. Amen, hallelujah. Let's turn that heat off right there for a second, y'all. You know you got to be real time with this thing. And some onion powder. You say you season food. How much are we using? Enough, that's right. Now, it's important. Remember, we used our right hand to get our salt out, so we're gonna use our left hand to touch our meat so we don't cross-contaminate. With me? All right, so pushing in the seasonings. This is our seasoning hand. Raise your right hand. Remember, you used to call it your spiritual antenna. <laughs> so that's the other reason it's okay to have a lot of seasonings, because when you turn it over, some of it might come off, so don't worry. Okay, that's good. Let me put this back on the heat. Turn the heat off though, because it was getting really hot. So I'm not gonna touch um, my seasoning with this hand, because this was the hand that touched the raw meat. So back with my seasoning hand. Again, don't be afraid of salt, okay? These are gonna be so good. All we're gonna do is put them in this olive oil and get a quick sear, okay? And the sear is just gonna help us lock in the juices and it's gonna give us beautiful color more than anything. Then we're gonna bake this in the oven or roast it, and it's gonna be absolutely delicious. When it comes out, we can even make a little gravy. I don't know if we're gonna do that or not. Let's see how, how this video is. Let's see how I'm feeling after an hour. <laughs> All right, this is seasoned pepper. And you really wanna make sure that your oil is piping hot, okay? That's important when you're searing, because if the oil is not hot enough, it's just not gonna work right, okay? And generously. And lastly, our onion powder. These about to be good. Okay. Now, ready is our season. Let's see if we make sure our skillet's ready. Oh yeah. Okay, so I'm pushing it in. I'm no longer seasoning, so I'm touching everything with all hands. And here we go. You hear that? That's what you want to hear. That's how you know it's red tea. As, they used, as Wanda used to say in In Living Color, when you hear that, it's ready to go. It's ready to go. Now when you're searing, you put it in there. I just barely moved it. Important. Don't touch it. Don't move it around, don't manipulate it because we're trying to get a crust, okay? So I'm gonna let that sit there and cook for a minute, a little bit, and I'm gonna wash my hands. We're gonna get right back to these chunks. Look at that. Perfect. And because we put them all in at the same time, when one's ready, they're probably all ready. Okay, same thing. Oh, this is beautiful. Look at that. Before we put these in the oven to finish roasting, I'm just gonna put some butter in here as well to get some added flavor. Take it off the heat. Ooh, it's getting hot. Oh, that 
looks good already. All right, let's get these babies into the oven. All right, family, we are back, and look at these beautiful pork chops. They came out of the oven perfect. I cooked them to about 145, 150 degrees, and then I pulled them aside, poured off the excess oil, okay? And the reason I did that is because I'm gonna make some gravy. So first thing I'm gonna do, I poured off the oil, I'm gonna just take a paper towel and just wipe this out, okay? You don't have to fully clean it because I still want the flavor that's in there, but I don't want all those little dark bits that, okay? I mean, you can leave it in there, it's not gonna hurt nothing, but it just might not be as pretty as you want, okay? So I usually do that first. Let me get rid of this, okay? And I'm gonna go back in here, turn the heat back on, and I'm gonna take some of that grease and oil that I poured off, and that's what I'm gonna use as the basis for my roux. See, now that's pretty right there. And, ha ha, look at that. And you can make as little or as much gravy as you want. You can make it as thick or as thin as you want, okay? That's where we're gonna start. But also by doing it this way, you'll notice that the less than desirable pretty part settled to the bottom and on the top we get this good old pork fat. All right, that's heating up, looking good. Gonna come here, my flour. I always just keep a little flour in a little Ziploc in the kitchen like this kind of, or whatever, so I just have it for ease of doing things like gravies, okay? I'm gonna just put just a little bit of gravy in, I mean, flour in here, okay? We're gonna cook this together, whisk it together until the raw flavor is gone. And what happens during this time is your pork chops are resting, and while they're resting, the juices are collecting again, and they like getting back in their grooves and stuff. You know, if you take it out, don't just take it out and cut it right away, as tempting as that might be. Don't do that. And the reason you don't want to do that is because all the juices will run out and then you'll really miss the good juiciness that's in there, okay? All right, so you see here? That looks good. Now we're going to add some water and then chicken broth, okay? So here we go. I'm gonna start with the water. And if you wanted to make this a creamy gravy, all you have to do is add heavy cream and chicken broth, or I'm just doing chicken broth because I'm just gonna do, I'm not gonna do a creamy gravy today. Grab a spoon. Need another spoon, y'all. Oh! <laughs> I'm gonna put some of this in. <laughs> chicken broth concentrate in here. You guys know I love using better than bouillon. This really gives you a very nice concentrated flavor. You can use any broth you want. I actually have a garlic broth I use sometimes as well. Better than bouillon comes with some really good flavors, um, but chicken base always, chicken works for everything. Okay, but anyway, you can use garlic or you can use um, beef, anything, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is just whisk this around and bring it to a boil that the boiling action is gonna have that help the flour thicken this up. Okay, I said that wrong. As it comes to a boil, <laughs> it's going to thicken up, <laughs> okay? And then we'll have a nice gravy to go on our pork chops. We can, we can put them back in there and just stir this up a little bit. And see, this is a pork chop right here. When, when this sucker is this thick, I mean, these babies is like this. Oh yeah, see, look at that. Now, if it's too thick, add you a little more water to it, okay? Like that. Let it boil some more, and you can also add a little more chicken flavor if you need it also, okay? And you see why we went ahead and got the, the little pieces out the bottom? Yeah, because if we left those in there, it would just be, I mean, it wouldn't taste bad, but it wouldn't look pretty. The dark, you know how it has those dark spots? Yeah, all of that would just kind of come up. It, would, it just, it wouldn't have this permanent color we want here. I'm just gonna use this little fork to give it a taste, see if I like where I'm headed. By golly, I love where we're headed. <laughs> That's good. I'm gonna add to this a little seasoned pepper. A little bit of onion powder. A little garlic powder. We don't need to add salt to this though because we've gotten all the salt we need is from that chicken broth. So we just add the other flavors. Beautiful. If you want your gravy thicker, take about a quarter cup of water. 
one teaspoon or so of flour, okay? Now this part's important. Make sure you whisk it up really good before you add it in. Otherwise, it's gonna lump on you, okay? So I just like to use a fork or, or a whisk, whatever. And you wanna really go at it to get the lumps out. So it's smooth, there you go. And then just slowly pour that in. And you see how that automatically started thickening it up? That's what we wanted. See? Thicker gravy. That's it. If your gravy's too thin, just add a little more water. Check your seasoning of your um, broth to make sure it's like you want it. If you need it to be a little thicker, just get about a quarter cup, if that, of water, teaspoon, tablespoon of flour, whisk it, and then just gently pour it in. Just like so. Look at that. Beautiful. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and do the kind of thing that country people do when they have pork chops and gravy. I'm gonna turn the heat down, so I don't wanna overcook these puppies, okay? But I'm gonna put them right back here. Whoop. And you know what, you don't have to do this gravy step. They are actually ready to eat now. But I just like dunking things in gravy. And since I live in Virginia, that's the South for these purposes. And there we have it. I'm gonna take it off the heat though because I don't want my pork chops to keep cooking, <laughs> okay? They are perfectly done. And look at this. This is beautiful. All right, I'm gonna get a plate and serve this up. And hopefully I get a bite. Here it is, ready for a taste. I'm gonna get just a little bit of this gravy and put on there, see that? You can make it with or without the gravy. You don't have to have the gravy at all because the pork chop is already done. So I'm gonna get a piece. Cause this looks so good. I let it rest and I want you to see. Oh my Lord. Look at that. You see that? Oh my God, that looks so good. Here we go. Here. That's too big of a piece to taste in there. Okay. Is that better, Ma? You know, my mom is watching. She's gonna say, take such a big taste, baby. Mm. Just need some white rice. I'm gonna go do it too, watch. Thank you for joining me. Me and this poke chop about to go at it because this is good. Oh my God, the seasoning is perfect. And because it's thick, when I told you don't be scared of the salt. Thanks for joining me. I'm gonna go get my husband. Have a great day, guys. I'll see you next time right back here in the Love Lab for more Calabama cooking with me, Chef Lorius. Happy cooking. <laughs>